come back in in the uh, in the action so uh, by now uh, i hope everybody is seeing my screen uh, uh, and I will start by explaining what I see first. So here, what do we see? Um, this is the uh, entrance of, of our uh, application. This is the quick start window. This window here will, will give um, all the information when you need to start. Uh, and in this case, you will see here that there are options uh, regarding when you need to start the project. So you can start a new project or open an existing one or even uh, continue working or open a project from project wise. This is one of our uh, connections, let's say, uh, with different ones. We have a list of recent projects. So we have a list of four projects um, that you can access quickly. That's the ones that you have used in the last uh, time that you open the Plaxis. Um, uh, on the top right side, you will see that we have uh, a news feed that is uh, a nice window where it will give you all the latest information that we have. And you can show more and then there's an even more detailed uh, window about all the different things that, that happen. We publish some things on our knowledge base. Uh, as you'll hear in these days, we have a large um, knowledge base where you can access and find information about the program uh, and uh, about tips uh, and tricks that we we can uh, we, we share with you but in any case any new um, uh, pretty much any new article will come here and you will see it directly in the in the news feed and last but not least important thing is the overview of your licenses every person that um, is using Plaxis will use uh, a license and at least the 2D basic that's the, the starting point and uh, in that case um, you will um, you'll have different licenses of course if you want to run a dynamic analysis or a flow analysis or a thermal uh, this will be shown here and depending on the status of this icon it will be either active that's the blue or not it can be red or can be grayed out it means you're not using it then uh, a gray gray out a gray color means it's not being used and the geotechnical select entitlements that's the entitlements that um that you will get for using the extra uh, features that we have and also to get all the support uh, with priority uh, from our from our team so let's start a new project i want to create a new project that's that's the plan um so i will hit the start a new project and the first thing that you'll see is practically the uh, project properties. And here is where we will define some of the information about the, prog the project that we're working on and about um, the different, let's say, model uh, conditions. What I will do right away is the fact that I will start by typing a nice um, a title for my project. That's exercise one. And I will also add some nice information about uh, some comments that is concerning an elastoplastic analysis of a drained footing. This information will be included in my project and every person that opens that project will see this information. Let's move into the most important actually tab apart from calling a, a nice name to our model. Uh, is the model tab where it contains all the different settings that will apply for this model. Uh, at the top, we'll see the type of analysis. For Plaxis 2D, we have two different types. is the plane strain and the axis symmetry. Plane strain means that in the out-of-plane direction, the one that goes through your monitor, we assume that we have the same cross-section geometry, so it extends in that direction through your monitor, let's say, uh, in the same way that allows us to perform plane stain. And axis symmetry, as you can imagine, this means that we have symmetry along an axis. The axis is typically in the um, uh, leftmost side of your model, and that can, can assist, for instance, in, in simulating a, a shaft excavation. Uh, the elements, we have two different types, six noded and 15 noded. The default is the 15 noded. There are cases where the six noded elements can also be used. This means you'll have fewer nodes being generated, which means that, of course, this will increase a lot the um, the calculation time that you have. But this is applicable, of course, when needed, and it's up to you to choose which one. By default, you have the 50 node elements. Uh, in this case, um, what we would like to focus on, of course, is the units. As you may notice, by default, we have selected the SI units, but it's up to you to change to different units depending on, on your region uh, or the preference, of course, that you might have. We will keep the units of meters, the force um, of uh, kilonewtons, uh, and the time today. 
this is also the default, but I will keep these ones and I will not change anything for the thermal. I'm not anyway interested in that. And jumping right away to the contour that defines the, um, the geometry, the considered geometry for my model. So everything will be included within this contour in principle. That's the way that you should think about it. And of course, anything that is at, on top, that's fine. But this also defines more or less the, the lateral boundaries and the bottom boundary, more or less. Um, so we have the X min. In this case, it will be set to zero. And in my case, the X max is set to 14. By the way, this, this uh, exercise that I'm following is already provided to you. Uh, I forgot to mention. So you have already the PDF. You can also open it and just follow with me if you want. Um, and uh, jumping back, the Y min is also set to zero. That's my surface. And the Y max will be to 14. 25. I'm not going to touch any of the other constants and cloud services. I will leave it as it is and I will just hit OK. That means I'm accepting this. And here we are in the window that I was explaining to you. Let's let's see quickly what we were saying before. Top, we have the menus here, the different typical menus that you have. Right under it is a, a toolbar with the most useful tools. You have, can create a new project, you can save one, you can open one, uh, you can undo, redo, um, zoom in or zoom out. Right below, the different modes, two blue modes, three green modes. I can switch uh, from one to the other uh, as long as I have something, of course, to simulate. Uh, the explorers, the selection explorer, we mentioned it here. I have nothing selected, so it shows empty. But the model explorer contains already information. It already is ready to accept any of these objects. It's, it's waiting for me to start. And um, how will I start? Well, first of all, this exercise concerns the construction of a foundation, a shallow foundation. And what I will try to create is, first of all, the um, a soil that is Uh, and in this case, um, I also would like to specify a borehole head. And how do I do it? Right here, I will uh, water present. And I will move, of course, to determining the weight, the unit weight of, of my clay layer. And in that case, it will be 16 and 18 kilonewtons per cubic meter. Let's have quick, um, uh, quick eyes. Probably you noticed that something happened also in the command line. Remember, I said at the bottom, the command line will follow you. It will give you all the information about what is happening now in the current session. You see here, if I go up, it starts from the beginning to where I am right now, giving the command that is being executed and the response. That's for more uh, later on that you'll get more accustomed to. But this one will keep on following me if you pay attention every time I do an action, then it will keep on following me. So I have my uh, my soil. So if I click back on the on the, on the borehole, I can see now the clay material is also assigned here. So you see we have different ways of defining which material to select and how to assign it. Like I said, you can do it in different ways. Uh, so one meter. Well, how can I define for 0.25 if I'm snapped at one meter? Well, one way, of course, is to change the setting. So I will change that one. And that's this icon here at the bottom, the snapping options. And when you click on that, you will get uh, this, this uh, snapping window where you can decide what you want to do with the snapping. Maybe you don't like it at all. You don't want it at all. But in this case, I know that it's very helpful and it is very well helpful in drawing. Uh, and the thing that I need to do in order to be able to have my, my cursor snapping uh, to draw the point 0.25 that I want, I just will change the snap intervals to four. This means that it will stop, start snapping now uh, per 0.25 of whatever it is. So I confirmed that one. So just for you to see it again, it's right here, the snapping options at the bottom. All right. And now I want to create the footing. How will I create the footing? So you will need practically a, a rectangle because you want to assign the concrete property to that. So that is what I'm going to do right now. So. I will create a soil rectangle at the location that I'm interested in. That's at six meter and four uh, for the Y. That's this is when I click, I do one left click. And then you see already that I can start drawing things in whatever direction. And you see now that my other side is snapping at point 0.25 when I move it. 
uh, and that's what I want to achieve because I want to reach the 8 meter in the x direction but 4.25 because it's 25 centimeters thick. So this is it. So I can easily just do this and now I click again with the left mouse button and then it is created. I click on escape. You see the footing being created. Hey, now that I see it red, red means actually it's being selected. Something is being selected. And what I what did I just say? That when you have something selected, you see this is a selection icon. I can select something. I see the selection explorer now giving me information. And it gives quite useful information depending on the mode that you are. So here we're in structures mode. It means that it will give me information about what I have in this case. So you see a polygon. That's the one that I just created, right? And uh, these are the coordinates, the points that consist. So I can change actually something directly here, you know? Look how easy it is to make the thickness of my model 4.5 instead of 4.25. Easy as that. But we don't want that, so we want 25 centimeters. Half meter is quite thick for the simple footing that we want to create. And you see some other information. And of course, what you will immediately realize is like, I need to assign here the concrete property. And how do I do that? Well, like I said, uh, the materials are all stored in this, the same place right here, show materials. I need to create a new material for my concrete. I will do that right now. Concrete, what behavior do I want my concrete? Well, in this case, and most of the times we use a linear elastic for concrete and concrete, we also determine it to be non-porous. This is something that you can, of course, uh, determine yourself. If you have something as non-porous, there is no of course, separation between the unsaturated and saturated soil. So we'll have only the unsaturated unit weight for the, uh, it's the same uh, 24 kilonewtons per cubic meter. That's the value for that. And what do we need in order to define a linear elastic model? That's of course, much fewer properties. That's the Young's modulus, which will be two to the power of seven and 0 0.15 for the Poisson's ratio. And this is it. I don't need to define anything else. I just click OK. And how do I sign it? I can drag and drop, right? But I'll tell you now another way. <clears throat> here in the Selection Explorer, I have selected it, right? I have it here. I can glow in the material. That's the property. And find the two options. I can also select it like this. And you see now it has the green color. I could also have just drag and dropped it. That's the same. It works the same way exactly. Um, and what else do I need for my uh, for my footing? Well, I've made my footing, but I also know that because of an existing building, I have a load that comes from that building. And I will simplify now this case to have a single um, uh, point load to simulate that. Where can I find the point loads? Hey, look, nice. Now all the different icons are there uh, since I switched from soil to structures mode. And you see that I have the point that I was talking about before. I find here the point, just a single geometric point if you need something for it, uh, or the point load, point displacement, same for the lines. All these options are uh, available since all these different generate a mess now, this will be far more refined, but I don't want that. I want to reset the coarseness locations to one. That's the icon here. And now if I click, to see this, I see it's back to one. And what do I need to do in this specific uh, mode is to generate the mesh. So here, if I click on this icon, the generate mesh, the one with the play button, uh, it will open this mesh options. And this mesh options allows us to generate the, uh, uh, the, the finite element mesh. We have some different clearly terms tell you what is the global. So very coarse means most of the elements will be very big. A coarse, medium, fine, and very fine. And in this case, in this exercise, um, we will use the medium setting. And that's, uh, that's it. That's simple as that. It will take into account this refinement, of course. And we will just click OK. And you will see, actually, this one is a very simple model. It took almost no time to generate 212 elements, which mean given the fact that we have 50 node elements, 18, uh, 1,805 nodes. And we're done, that's it. We, we finished generation of the model. And this is the spot that um, the, uh, the demo also stops um, because we have 
clearly now explained everything that has to do with the soil mode, the structures mode, and the mesh mode. And this is the time that I will pass now um, the um, the 